Well, we have to pull our party together. Um, and I hope this contest can be the start of that. I want a positive uh, contest. I don't want uh, mudslinging. I want us, all of us candidates uh, and our colleagues to show the nation that we are building a team together. Uh, without that teamwork, we can't deliver. This is not all about one particular leader. It's about all the talents of the party being able to thrive and pull together in the same direction for the sake of our country. I agree we have to start delivering for people. Uh, it is no point in us saying we are, we actually have to start to do that. And we know that many of our public services are in a, a desperate state, particularly because of the pandemic. We have a huge catch up job to do. So we have to recognize that we need to modernize Whitehall to do that. That has got to be the starting point. We cannot continue what we've been doing because it, it clearly uh, isn't working. I think the other thing that we also need to do is to recognize that we have to demonstrate, we understand that issues are different in different parts of the country. What I've shown in the campaign that I've been running is that I'm attracting support from young people, from women, from red wall, from blue wall seats and all parts of the United Kingdom. And I think we also need to create some national missions to unite people around. But that I think is the starting point. We've got to make this contest about building a team and we've got to be talking about the issues that matter to the public. And I would also not do the corporation tax hikes because I think it's vitally important that we're attracting investment into our country. But the big problem we face here is that the public sector needs to be growing slower than the private sector. We need higher private sector growth and we've had anemic growth for the past two decades. So that is going to take really strong regulatory reform, taking the full benefits of being able to do different uh, from the EU in areas like financial services, environment, better environmental regulation, better planning regulation, better regulation about building so that we can get the economy going, so we can get companies investing in our country and so we can see people's wages rise with higher paid jobs, because that is ultimately what we are going to have to do to solve our problems in the longer term. So I take those immediate steps to help families who are really struggling at the moment, whilst getting on with the long term supply side reforms that, frankly, we've delayed for too long so that we can see Britain become a fast growing, highly innovative economy. Our number, and Heather asked the, the most important policy question of this campaign and what the country is looking at. And the most impressing economic challenge we face is inflation. Inflation is the enemy that makes everybody poorer, and it must be the government's priority to get a grip of it. And, you know, I, I'm not going to do anything that puts that at risk. So I will deliver tax cuts, but I will do so responsibly after we've got a grip of inflation. And I think that's the right thing to do. And indeed, that's what Margaret Thatcher did in the early 80s. Uh, and it's an approach to the economy that's been supported by many people familiar with her thinking. Now, I published a tax plan earlier this year, and it set out my plans for the future. We do need to cut and reform business taxation. We need to do it in a way that actually drives growth and productivity, getting businesses to invest more and to innovate more in R&D. So we'll do that if I'm elected leader. We also need to reward hard work because that's a core conservative value, which is why I've put in our plans and paid for a cut to income tax before the end of this parliament. On energy, you know, Heather knows that this is the biggest problem that everyone is facing. I've announced lots of things already as a government that we collectively have stood behind. We have not done a good enough job of communicating that. So we need to improve, improve that to make sure people understand that the help that they are getting, which is considerable over the autumn and winter to help with some of those bills. But that's only a short term fix. What we also need to do is improve the supply of energy we have over the long term. So look at new sources of homegrown energy, whether that's the North Sea with gas or offshore wind, we need to double down on all of that. Similarly with home insulation, where we can help save money off people's bills in relatively short order by improving, improving energy efficiency of their homes. Those are the type of long-term ways we can help on the energy side, as well as the short-term fixes. Uh, but lastly, the most important thing to say is the best way to help people with the cost of living and put more money in their pockets is to make sure that they're in well-paid jobs. So we need to move people off welfare into work, make sure they've got the skills they need to get better paid jobs. That's a conservative way to help people. And that's the best long-term way to deal with this problem.
Uh, so the question was, why am I best placed to stand up to Putin? It's because I, more than anyone, understand just how important it is that the UK remains a force for good in the world and is seen as a force for good in the world. The threats to our country are numerous and existential, and we need to show that we are a strong country that can't be pushed around. In every single opportunity that I was given as a minister, when we were threatened by opposition parties, I stood firm, I was incredibly robust, and I did not allow anyone to smear our reputation or push us around. That's the sort of attitude that I would be bringing on the international, um, on the international stage. It is critically important that countries around the world know that we are there to protect those who cannot protect themselves and that we look after the vulnerable. But we will not be able to do that if we aren't strong. I believe in strong defense. I think it is important that we continue to meet our commitments to NATO. And I think that when you do all of these things in the round, uh, people like Putin, who are a threat to our country and who are looking for weaknesses at every opportunity, will know that we are not a country to be trifled with. On Ukraine, I believe that it is important because of the vulnerabilities that they have to continue to support them. I think that a loss uh, in that war would be terrible for us for many years to come, the long-term threat would be significant. And we, along with our allies in the Western world, should do everything we can to protect the people 